After learning about Kanban, let's look into a more traditional Agile methodology, the one that the Agile movement began with. Of course, I'm talking about Scrum. Personally, I have a love-hate relationship with it. I can make it work in DevOps. However, for it to address all the different DevOps needs, it needs to be adapted and changed quite a bit. In this course, I will show the classic approach of Scrum and how it was intended to be utilized. Then we can compare Kanban and Scrum and see which one works better for DevOps. Remember, all Agile methodology should adapt to reflect the environment. Bruce Lee said it best, adapt what is useful, reject what is useless, and add what is specifically your own. See, secret DevOps martial arts stuff. Now I'll teach you the server death touch command, rm rf slash. Scrum is an iterative approach to agile software development. For managing projects, is definitely a flexible holistic product development strategy where a development team works as a unit to reach a common goal. Challenges assumptions of the traditional sequential approach to a product development and enables teams to self-organize by encouraging for physical co-location or close online collaboration of all team members, as well as daily face-to-face -face communications among all the team members and the disciplines. In Scrum projects, planning is broken down into sprints. Sprint is the development cycle where tasks are taken from the backlog and where setting priorities of tasks can be worked on in a work cycle. These cycles are typically two to four weeks long. The goal of the sprint is to have a shippable working version of the software or feature. This is also known as a minimum viable product. In theory, if you're disciplined and integrate test driven development, continuous integration, continuous deployment with integrated QA testing, you can have a shippable product at the end of a sprint. I can tell you though, if you do not have all these components, there is no way you will have a minimum viable product worth shipping. I can tell you a lot of horror stories about misrelease dates, so just make sure you get your pipeline down and your quality should be the metric that you track and improve on. All this sounds easy to do for sure, but it's quite an accomplishment when you pull it off. Now let's talk about the different roles in Scrum and how they are defined. The easiest and most common way to mess up Scrum is to assign certain roles to certain people in an organization. For example, a manager should never be a Scrum master, but more on that a little later. Let's divide these into the roles and understand what they should be responsible for. Product owner. A product owner is the one who shares the vision of the product prioritizes the features to be built and makes key decisions on behalf of the team or the project. The Scrum Master is responsible for guiding the team, building a trustworthy environment within the team, facilitating decisions, negotiating, communicating and removing impediments and problems. The Scrum Team is a cross-functional team that is responsible for developing the product it is a small team consisting of developers, business analysts, testers, etc. The team works together in tandem while building the application. The reason why certain people can't hold Scrum positions in an organization is due to the fact that it causes a conflict of interest and weakens the process as a whole. In my experience, QA leads should be the Scrum master. Product owner should be someone in the product team. Engineering management should never be a scrum master or product owner because of the conflict of interest it causes. The team should be cross-functional and focus on the feature or feature set. For example, members should include a UI, user experience, back-end, front-end, and operations people. Why? Because you need a team to rally around the product feature or objective. The need to see it from conception to completion brings out the intrinsic motivation to make it work and be a success. Let's cover a couple more Scrum terms, milestones and demos. Milestones are a way to mark the end of one phase of work from another. In most cases, it's a feature or a subset of features to address an issue. Demo. Demo is a team's opportunity to get feedback on a new feature from the company as a whole. They are typically 15 minute meetings where each team is able to showcase the completed feature that the team worked on. Sprint planning. Now a lot of people think these are a huge waste of time and I agree, 
but they are necessary to the process. So we get the product and the feature teams together to go over the backlog of features, select features to be developed in this sprint, and then try in vain to give real estimates. The first step in sprint planning is to take the user stories or product features based on a requirements doc and break them down into a series of tasks. One of the most important rules is breaking these down into small enough tasks. Typically any task has three components, research, development, and testing automation. One issue I've seen time and time again is not breaking down tasks into small enough compartments or subtasks. Using the three components helps you break down into the right size. Breaking the task into manageable sizes should be done well ahead of time by the engineering manager and product owner. The alternative to getting this right is spending four to eight hours in a meeting every two to four weeks. The next step is estimating the time each task will take and this is where the train tends to hit, come off the tracks. People are inherently bad at estimating how much time things take. So here's a couple of tools I've used to help combat this. Other agile teams use t-shirt size, hours, or play an estimation game called planning poker. All can work to figure out how to estimate tasks. However, I found it helps to divide all the tasks into so-called buckets. Each task is put into one of the buckets based on the estimation on how long it will take to complete. The buckets are half day, one day, three days or a week. If a task is more than one of these bins, round up to the larger bin. In general, we underestimate more than we overestimate work. Anything larger than a week's effort needs to be broken down into more manageable tasks in the planning stage. Another tool is working day estimation. Let's be honest, only in a perfect world, all eight hours of a working day can be spent on a single task. As we all know, Reality is quite different. Meetings, reading emails, miscellaneous personal and other professional tasks eat up at least an hour or two on a good day. So define a working day as in the actual hours you're available to work on a task. Generally, four to six hours a day is a full working day. Teach your teams to use the bucket tool and the working day concept and you'll be able to have much more realistic time estimates to complete a task than ever before. A word of advice about release dates. Never commit to a specific date or feature release as tempting as it might be. Most of the time you won't hit the exact date and you'll feel pressured and stressed, which may result in an inferior product, as well as missing your date and bad publicity. I found that using end of month and quarters as target times is enough granularity when it comes to releasing software. The next step is filling up the team's capacity and tracking capacity and cadence. This is where the art of the burn down chart comes into play and historic performance helps plan and execute things in the future. The burn down. Process on a scrum project can be tracked by means of a release burn down chart. The scrum master should update the release burn down chart at the end of each sprint. The horizontal axis of the sprint burn down chart shows the sprints. The vertical axis shows the amount of work remaining at the start in the end of each sprint. Backlog grooming is usually the forgotten meeting, the meeting that no one does but is necessary. This is critical to the scrum and Kanban process. This is taking the time for product and management to assign priorities to tasks in the backlog. In a product cycle, demands and priorities could change. This is the principal reason why many teams adopt Lean and Agile. The ability to allow teams to adjust to a changing market and changing priorities on a regular basis. Retrospectives. Although there are many ways to conduct an agile sprint retrospective, our recommendation is to conduct it as we need to start doing, stop doing, or continue doing meeting. This is perhaps the simplest but most often the most effective way to conduct a retrospective. Using this approach, each team member is asked to identify specific things that the team could start doing, stop doing, and continue doing. From these insights, you feed them back into the next sprint as a feedback loop. Sprint demos. This is the team's opportunity to get feedback on new features from the company as a whole. They are typically 15 minutes long and showcase the new feature 
or set of features. This is the chance to get feedback from the whole team and the company to help guide the product direction and help determine what's important in what's being developed. So after all of this, here are the takeaways that I found from Scrum. It works well for organized and disciplined teams. Has a lot of planning and tracking overhead. If followed properly, you can get to dependable release cycles. However, this is the exception and not the rule. Scrum Ben, a new methodology is catching on in the industry in the past couple years, a cross between Kanban and Scrum. Since it's new, I have limited experience with running teams using it. I look forward to using it in the near future with my teams and exploring all it has to offer and adapting it to fit DevOps teams. I won't go into deep into the new methodology because I just want to give you some of the highlights and pitfalls of it. So the center of concept of Scrum Button is planning meetings are on demand. Meaning planning meetings are triggered by a minimum amount of work in the backlog versus by the end of a sprint. So in practice, Scrum Button doesn't limit work in progress by time. Instead, it limits it by which stage it's in. When using Scrum Button, a story proceeds through various stages of work. It's clearly defined what stage is, and then it's very clear what teams are working on and what stage of that work they're on. But coming back, it's Scrum at the core. It's still organized around teams. But the central thing is, is it recognizes the value of time boxed iterations and formalizes a continual improvement techniques with specific ceremonies. However, has a couple cultural issues. Hard release dates. Most companies are used to them. Scrum Bun prefers not to have them at all. It's difficult to convince your management to adopt. And there's not a lot of long-term planning and scoping. And the last one is it really takes a big change in your organization to pull off. We just talked about the pitfalls of Scrum Bun, but let's talk about the positive things, the takeaways. Less meetings. There's no more deadlines for projects. We plan only when we need to. Fits with the whole concept of flow very well. It's good for rapid development, good for rapid product releases. Okay.